Hey, what's up guys? Sebio, welcome back to another video. Today, I am going to be showing you guys how to modify your Spider-Man suit and how to turn it from a boring, plain Spider-Man suit to a super dope movie replica suit using some puff paint and other painting techniques that I'm about to show you. So, let's do it. Okay guys, so I am going to show you two different Spider-Man masks, but they are both the same exact mask using the same exact pattern, but one is not puff painted and one is puff painted. Okay guys, so here is the first mask on me right now, and you can just see it's a normal, plain Spider-Man mask, and it's just flat. It has nothing on it. Guys, yeah, so this is the puff painted mask right here, and you can already tell that it just looks so much more three-dimensional, and it's not just flat. You can see the webbing really stands out, nice and puffed up, and it just looks really good, and it adds just so much more flair to the mask. So here's my iron spider suit with the metallic gold puff paint and red. And here is my homecoming with all of the red dotted texture. Okay, so now that you guys got a taste of what puff paint actually does to your suit and how much it really vamps it up, I'm going to show you guys how to exactly do it. Okay guys, so this is the puff paint that I use right here. It is by Tulip, as you guys can see, and it is slick. So slick means that it is shiny. So if you want a shiny look on your Spider-Man costume, this is what you use. There's also a puffy version as well, which this is just a normal um, matte version of it, which is not shiny. Also, I use these bottles to put my puff paint in so I get more precise lines. Just as I did this checkerboard pattern and these dots, I use these applicator tip bottles that I found. There will be a link in the description so you guys can go check these out so you can get them. So for my homecoming suit, I made a turquoise color using these three puff paints. You can actually mix puff paint just like you would mix normal paint. So I just took this normal blue and then this white to lighten it up and then added a little bit of yellow. And it just created a nice turquoise color for the homecoming checkerboard pattern. So I just pour my puff paint into the little applicator bottle and then I just use a paper clip to mix it and I just mix it in there and I put the lid on and I shake it and that's how I mix my puff paint colors to create one solid color. Now puff paint alone is really good and it works and it helps create that rubbery look but if you really want rubber webs you can actually add a little bit of liquid latex into your puff paint and create a mixture between the two to make it actually um, rubbery. So uh, you just take the cap off the puff paint and you take some of the liquid latex and you just add just, just a little bit. That's it. That's all you're going to need. You put the top right back on. You shake it all around and um, you should have yourself a nice mixture of puff paint and latex. So comparing the two, this is the latex puff paint mixture and this is just a normal puff paint. Now this is matte puff paint and this is slick, so this one's obviously more shiny. But when you stretch this, you can see that the puff paint starts to break and it will actually start to just come apart and it just is not that stretchy. But with the puff paint latex mixture, when stretching it you see no loss there and you see um, it stretches and it returns to its normal form just it's super good and super resilient for your costumes versus just using this which will start to tear and crack Okay guys, so now that you have seen all of the details on the puff paint bottles and the paint itself, I'm going to be showing you guys how to exactly puff paint. It's pretty self-explanatory. All you gotta do is just squeeze the bottle and drag it into the motion that you want it to come out as. But yeah, here are a couple clips of me just puff painting different patterns and different ways. See, I have my suit stretched out. Now you always want to stretch out your fabric because when your suit is stretched out and you puff paint, this is going to make it easier when you wear the costume. If you just normally puff paint the suit without stretching it out, when you put the costume on, the puff paint will tear and it will break. So you want to have it 
being painted on with the stress that it has that will be applied when you put the suit on. I take a piece of cardboard and I pin my fabric down just using some sewing pins and just to stretch it out and keep it flat and so I can work on it and that's how I work on my suits. Okay guys, so this is me puff painting the Spider-Man homecoming suit. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm just pressing down and lifting up the bottle to get a dotted texture um, like it shows in the homecoming movie and it looks really good. So here we have a Sam Raimi Spider-Man 3 symbiote suit and you can see I am doing parallel lines to create a brick pattern which is seen on the suit and it's pretty easy just got to keep a steady hand and just create my own little brick pattern. So here's the amazing Spider-Man suit and you can see that I already have the honeycomb pattern done in a red with a freehand kind of style but I'm just doing the webbing and Puff painting takes a lot of time and patience. You got to go very slow if you want it to turn out good. I suggest using some excess fabric to practice on so you have a steady hand. But yeah, here's just the webbing and um, without any applicator bottle or tip. Every time you puff paint, the paint actually sinks into the fabric, so it won't be as 3D as when you painted it on. So I suggest to do a double layer of paint or make sure you lay it on extra thick so it doesn't soak in too much. Okay guys, so oftentimes the puff paint will collect air in the bottle and it will splat out, leaving you with just a bad looking puff paint. And as you can see, it just doesn't look good. And it's gonna make your, your final suit look bad. So make sure to pick up your bottle and shake it sh just so it looks better and there is no air bubbles. But if you make a mistake, you guys can actually use disinfectant Clorox wipes to get the puff paint out. So what you do is you just take some of these and you just rub them like that. Now, it may seem like you just completely smeared it. Don't have to fret, guys. You will be able to get this out, just don't worry, okay? So just keep scrubbing, and you should be able to get most of that puff paint out. As you guys can see, I had a pretty bad spill using this, and I was able to get out most of this using just Clorox wipes, guys. So now you guys can see that it is pretty much returned to its original color. It's a little bit darker than what it was, but you can see that the Clorox wipes definitely helped just soak up all that paint and pretty much remove it. So you guys can see that Puff Paint does a really good job at just making your Spider-Man suit stand out and just look really good. So guys, that was pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully this was helpful to all of you prop makers out there who want to work on your Spider-Man suit and modify it. This was the Puff Paint tutorial video. Don't forget to leave a like and share with your friends if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you guys are new. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to stay creative. Deuces. It ain't me.